Aleluia. Come on, put your hands together. How many of you know? It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank the Lord. Thank you, team. Amen. Amen. That was good. Amen. The Lord is just good. Well, since they're singing about Jesus, I'm going to talk about Jesus today. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on, lift hands and worship him. Come on. Come on. Give him something today. Open your mouth and worship him. In your spiritual languages. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, God. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Dove Church today. To our viewing audience and those of you that are here in person worship. We thank God for you. Thank God for you looking in on us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for praying for us. We Solicit your continued support financially. We thank you for what you're doing, and we ask you to pray about continuing and pray about giving into this house as it is good ground. Amen? Amen. And the good word goes out of this place. Good worship goes out into this. It's just good. Amen? Amen. Thank God to, for the waters of baptism today. We baptize after several years of not baptizing, and so we're just thanking God for the victory we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so keep praying for each other. And so we pray for many of you that the Lord would, would strengthen you and build you up where you're torn down, that he would just keep you. Amen. You ready for the word? Amen. Amen. Everybody with your Bible or wherever your Bible is, repeating after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe, I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the victory we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we bless you and honor you and worship you today. And declare there is nobody like you. Holy Spirit, guide us and speak through us as an oracle today. Help us to think God's thoughts as it relates to this time of ministering to these, his people. Bless now, we ask in Jesus' name. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Amen. We're speaking from the subject today, Jesus Revealed. Jesus revealed. It's always good for the church to talk about Jesus because the world doesn't want to talk about him. 
They want you to hold high thoughts. They want you to, 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 to have moments of silence when something tragic happens. And that's the last time you need to be silent. That's not the time to be silent. And many places they scrutinize if they call a religious person, what kind of prayer are you going to pray in? And, and are you going to use Jesus' name? The reason why I'm saying that is because I was asked that. And I told him I was going to use the name Jesus. And uh, left the option up to them whether I could do it or not do it. But if I got up, that's what I was going to do. Amen. Amen. It is important to know who Jesus is. Not be familiar with him, not have heard it, but that you know who he is in relationship. It's important to know why Jesus is so important. He's important. It's important to know why Jesus is God's everything. Jesus is God's everything. One of the books I was using for, for study is, is one of Watchman Nee's books on Jesus. God's everything. And so with that and the scripture that, that I wanted to work with I said, well, we're just going to talk about Jesus today. Is that all right? Here comes a key statement and a foundational statement. Jesus is God's ultimate revelation to man. Once you get Jesus, you get God's ultimate revelation to man. There is nothing beside. He's the ultimate revelation. So it's important to understand who Jesus is and why he is key to our relationship to God. Jesus is key to the relationship to God. Some of us want God and not want Jesus. Well, what the Bible that I read says you can't have God without Jesus. And I'm not talking about a sage. I'm not talking about a wise person down through time. I'm talking about the one that God identified as his only begotten son. And he said, in the earth, his, he established his name. You should call his name Jesus. Call his name Jesus. John 14 and 6, turn it quick. John 14 and 6. You might want to look along in the Bible. This is, this is an interactive message. Because the Bible says that the, 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 the ancient church, the historical church, searched the scriptures daily. They searched it. That means they, they script scrolls and they turn pages to see if those things be so. So it wouldn't be said that that I just the preacher said. See, we've heard some nice sermons. Now we need to know what the word says. Amen. John 14 and 6. Jesus said to him, I I am the way the truth and the life. And this is the part that shows you the importance of Jesus to God. No one comes to the Father except by me. Except through me. So if the only way to get to God is through Jesus, and if you throw Jesus out of the equation, you won't get to God. 
you will not have a relationship with God. Amen. Jesus is God's everything. And we're going to talk about how important he is. The book that I'm going to is the book of Hebrews. And the book of Hebrews uh, addresses a problem current to this day. It seems that many Jewish believers of that day were beginning to move away from Christ-centered teaching back to their Judaistic uh, customs and beliefs. And they did it not because they didn't believe, but they did it. They left Christian teachings because they were escaping persecution. I want to tell somebody, don't let the enemy scare you back into your former self. Soon as you start advancing in the things of God, your old enemy shows up to drag you back to where you used to be. And you have to be careful because in your head sometimes you may look at those as the good old days. And I mean, you know, sometimes while you're going through the good old days, it's been hell. Amen. They're only good because memory has softened. And God is so great to your memory, you remember the best parts. And you almost cancel the rough stuff. Amen. Amen. I wish things were like they were before. <laughs> the only time I might say that as it relates to paying bills. <laughs> but I was a kid then. And didn't have good sense. So that was the good old days for me. <laughs> but outside of that, <laughs> somebody say amen a little bit. Amen. This letter to the Hebrews came to encourage them to stay in the faith. I'm going to give you the scripture in a minute. Hang with me. To encourage them to stay in the faith. And go on into perfection also meaning Maturity. See, you can only get mature if you keep going forward. You can't, you can't get mature doing the electric slide backwards. Every time you're pressed to get better, you want to go back to a time where you weren't in a press. Amen? Amen? Christ is over. Let me, let me establish a few things that he's over. He's over the Judaic system. Christ is better than angels because they worship him. Christ is better than the priesthood as he was to sacrifice once and for all. And I'm talking about the Aaronic priesthood, the priesthood of Aaron. He's better than that. Christ is better than the law, for he meditates a better covenant based on better promises. Hebrews talks about all of those things, just an encapsulation of the, of the book. But let me zoom into the, to the portion that we're going to discuss today. Hebrews 1, 1 through 4. When you have it, say amen. If you need a Bible, our ushers have some. Make sure everybody looks at it and looks into it and sees it. Hebrews 1, 1 through 4. It says, God, who at various times, in various ways, spoke in times past, to the fathers 
by the prophets. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Whom he has appointed heir of some things. Through whom also he made the world. Who being, talking about Jesus, all of this is about Jesus. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had, had by himself. When he had by himself purged our sins. Come on somebody. When he got finished with his work, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels. As he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. He's got a better name than any name that is named, including every angel. His name is better. Well, let's go back and unpack this. God spoke in various times in different ways to different men and, 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 and as he was expressing his will in, 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 in the earth. To Moses, it was the burning bush, Exodus 3. To Elijah, it was the still small voice, 1 Kings 19. To Isaiah, it was a heavenly vision. Isaiah 6. To Amos, it was a basket of fruit. Amos 8 and 1. God spoke to the fathers. Who were they? The Jewish religious leaders of that day through the prophets. And that was from Genesis to Malachi. Well, at Malachi, God stopped speaking to anybody. After Malachi. In 400 years he didn't say a thing. And anybody that said he said something to them. They told a lie. Woo. But then the Bible goes on to say something interesting. In these last days. The days of this writing. Is considered the start of the last days. And we've been in the last days for 2,000 years. These are the last days. If you don't believe it, keep watching around you. They're the last of the last days. And at that time, he has spoken to us, starting with Jesus. That's the voice he speaks through. Jesus is the heir, the inheritor of all things. Wow. If you have Jesus, you inherit what Jesus has. That's why you need to have Jesus. That means... What God is, Jesus is. What God has, Jesus has. Jesus was God's son before the worlds were made. So when he got up to come down to save us, it was that he had to, 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 to backstep. He became poor that we could become rich. So he had to reduce himself to come get something that was valuable to God also. He lowered himself, the Bible says, and he took on the form of a servant, somebody that's willing to stoop down and wash somebody's feet. Because you were precious to him. Come on, come on, come on. Don't think you're nobody because God didn't send an angel after you because he sent 
the one that had a better name than the angel after you. For you to not want to acknowledge Jesus, I ask a question. What's wrong with you? That you can't even acknowledge him enough to learn anything about him because you're so set in your life path and what's of interest to you of life. That you don't spend a little time just saying, I got to listen so I can understand and know who Jesus is. We presume we know. But unless you take him in, you don't know him. See, I know what good bread tastes like and I know what bad bread tastes like because I tasted it. Come on. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many of you know when you get good bread, it satisfies your soul? I know some of you think of enough some rolls with a little butter draw, throw down in the middle of my. But you go to dinner after this message, you know. But until then, we're talking about a bread that seeps down into your spirit and satisfies the longing of your soul. He said, I am the bread of life. Are y'all ready today? Then Jesus, the son, was appointed to the creation council. Where did that happen? Genesis 1, 26. He said, let us make. So the one that had the name above every other name was brought into council with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And they came together to make the world. Then a word in our scripture says, who being the brightness of his glory. Who being means he was preexistent. He had no beginning. And he has no end. Although he tells you, I am the Alpha and Omega. And my thing is, that messes with me because if you be the beginning and the end, where is the beginning of the beginning and where is the end of the end? <laughs> He's saying, I'm everything. Jesus is God's everything. How many of you believe that today? That's why when you get in trouble, you don't necessarily, if you say Jesus is unmistakable, who are you talking about? Nobody questioned. What, what Jesus? You're talking about Javier Jesus? No, 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 no. And some of you don't get Jesus all the way out. You just get one syllable. Come on. I've been in the car with people driving a little fast. And I'm putting on brakes on my side, and they driving, but I'm putting on brakes on my side. <laughs> and, and holding on to the two, to the handle on the other side, and reaching for stuff. And <laughs> y'all looking at me like y'all never done that. Anybody, any, how many of you been on the passenger side driving too? Put your hand up. No, some of y'all scared to put it all the way up. Put it all the way up. And you got brakes on that side. They don't do nothing, but you got them over there. Sometime I hit them so hard, I stumped the floor. <laughs> I knew I had some company in here. Brightness of his glory. In essence, Jesus was the light of light. Or the light of God. 
Jesus perfectly reflects the brightness of God. Whew, that, that thing blow my mind. And so what does he reflect? He reflect the glory of God. What is the glory of God? It is the splendor of God. God's essence radiates light. These lights need electricity to come on. The moon, well, the sun burns by gases. It's literally on fire. And it's thousands upon thousands of miles away. But I declare down here on earth you can get sunburned. But the Bible says that Jesus is brighter than that. And what Jesus is doing, he's reflecting the glory of God. One writer says about heaven, there is no light there because they have no need of light because he is the light. Come on, come on, come on. That's why without Jesus you don't have. Come on, y'all work with me here. Exodus 13 and 21, back in the Old Testament, gives us some information of, uh, uh, about this light source. Different times through history, God would drop his light down. He would drop his light down. And in Exodus 13, 21, it speaks to the glory cloud of God's presence that went with the Israelites in the wilderness. Are y'all at 1321? And it said there, the Lord went before them by day in a what? Of cloud to lead the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them what? So as to go by day and night. So what is it saying there? In the day when it got real hot, he became air conditioned. But at night, he was the light in the middle of the camp. Whew. Hey, Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Bible says those who walked in darkness have seen a a great light. You need light. And what's the best light you can get? It's the light that's the light. Are y'all out there? When Pharaoh was trying to stop the children of Israel, the light showed up then to separate him from the children of Israel while they could walk across safely on dry land. As the sea was parted, he stood up as, 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 as a light cloud. It was his glory. They thought it was burning, but it was glory. It was, it was the light of God's presence. That's why when you have God, sometimes you wonder, I didn't understand what that was, but then he, he, he gave me revelation. Revelation means the light came on. I got revelation, the light came on. And once Jesus becomes real to you, the light will come on. And how many know you need the light? In the scripture, there's a light illustration. In essence, the writer of Hebrews is saying, at previous times through history, God spoke to the fathers, the religious leaders. So in essence, they were a type of light. They were a type of light, but they weren't that light. But when Jesus came, Jesus was the only one that said, I am the light of the world. Isaiah was a light. Uh, 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 Moses was a light. Amos was a light of sorts, but they were a light source, a sliver of light, but then they were making way for the light. Yeah. 
What is Jesus doing now? Our scripture says he's upholding all things by the word of his power. The, the idea behind the word translating uphold is better thought of as maintaining. What is keeping all of this together? It's the maintaining word of Jesus. What is a maintaining word of Jesus? And this gospel shall be preached into all the world. Then will the end come. And when it gets everywhere, the reason why you're still sitting here is because Jesus is maintaining it with his word. The reason why something that was supposed to kill you couldn't because he's maintaining you with his word. Something you thought was going to take you out, you did all right because he is maintaining you. Come on, you ought to get happy. Turn to somebody and say, do you know he's holding you? Oh, yeah, God. He's upholding you with his word. It's not your Phi Beta Kappa. It's not your Summa Cum Laude. It's not your brilliance. It's not how smart you are. It's, it's he's holding you. Not only is Jesus the light of God, but he's the brilliance of God. He can search God's mind like the Holy Spirit because he is God. Wow. And then it goes on to say he purged our sin. Jesus is also a great love who purged the guilt and shame of our sins. He did this all by himself one last time. He only had to do it one time. So you don't have to make another sacrifice of atonement or anything else. Whew. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And after he did that, the Bible says, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He did not need to stand because you sit down when your work is done. Well, well some of y'all sit down anyway all the time. <laughs> but when Jesus sat down, it signified that it is finished. So he made earth match heaven. When he sat on the cross, he matched it by sitting down in heaven. It's finished. And he's not going to get up for a long time until God says it's time. Then he's going to stand back, stand up, come back, and judge the world. He's on his way back. But while he's sitting, he's in a place of intercession at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Daily make, I can't sit and stand at the same time. Daily making intercession for you. When you get in trouble, all he does is hold up a cup of blood to, to the Father and say, you remember this? When you should be dealt with justice, but the cup means mercy, uh, let him go on a little while longer. When you did it, but you didn't say you did it, but he know you did it, he's, don't kill them. Let them live a little while longer. When you thought you got away, but you didn't get away, Jesus was saying, hey, but I died for them too. <laughs> Some the devil tried, he couldn't do because Jesus said, do you know you got to come by this first? 
You got to come by me first, and they belong to me because I got them back for my daddy. You ought to thank your big brother for coming to rescue you. I got a bad big brother. And when the enemy jumps on me, he said, you stand back. And he comes forward and tells the devil, now you pick on somebody your side. You pick on somebody bigger than you. Remember I already said his name was above the name of every angel. And Satan is the name of an angel. And his name is above your Satan. Angel Satan. Wicked one angel Satan. Jesus' name is above that name. And there's power in that name. That's why it shakes up hell. And sin trembles through heaven. Ransal is sleeping in his grave, but he screamed one day, there's something about the name. It is the greatest name. I know. I love to call the name. Because it is. <laughs> Excuse me, I just got a little toe up a little bit. Because it soothes my doubts and it calms all of my fear when I'm afraid. The name of Jesus. Just whisper it quickly, quick. <laughs> Don't say it loud. Just what you just a little bit. He's still setting the captives free. He's still restoring sight to the blind. He's dealing with arthritis. <laughs> Jesus. Give him a praise in this house. Come on, give him a good praise in this house. The word says he, came, he became better than the angels. His assurance of becoming better than the angels, he did it on earth. He said, just in case... Hebrew saints that, that, that are going back to Judaism because you don't trust that Jesus is enough, so you're going back to your old stuff, so you're letting somebody drag you back. Just in case you think it's, it's still about angels, it's really about Jesus. And he said, this is how we know that he obtained a name much better than the angels is because he was made perfect. And then he became our complete redeemer. And when God needed somebody to come after us, he did not send an angel. He did not send Moses. He did not send Abraham. He sent Jesus. But while he was sending Jesus, Jesus was volunteering. So the two are one. Hebrews 2, 10 through 11. Anybody getting blessed a little bit today? Hebrews 2, 10 and 11. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things, by whom are all things. In bringing many sons to glory. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. How did Jesus obtain 
a better name. He did it through suffering. Whew. He became our, our, the captain of our soul because he was willing to, 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 to pay the cost. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Have mercy, Lord. A more excellent name is not a title. It denotes nature and character. His character is good. His nature is righteous. Well, I'm almost done. I know you're tired. Mark 9 and 7. This is the word of the Lord to you today. This is for you today, for real. Mark 9 and 7. When you have it, say amen. And a cloud came. And this is Jesus talking with his disciples on a mountain. And he said, and a cloud came and overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. Turn to somebody and say, listen to Jesus. Not only is Jesus God's everything, Jesus is your everything. <laughs> He's your everything. I'm going to give you this rundown of scriptures, but then, then that will be the close. 1 Timothy 1 and 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope. Our hope is not pinned to Jesus. Jesus is the hope. Jesus is the hope. I'm hoping. Are you in Jesus? Jesus is the hope. Are, are you hearing me? Who is hope? Jesus is the hope. Colossians 3 and 4. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Jesus Christ is our life. He's the life. Do you have life? No. Your life is Christ. So a Christian has nothing but Christ. As if that's nothing. You have nothing but Christ. Woo. Then 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 gives us four things. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Whoa, all four. Let me say it this way. I want you all to get this. God has not given us wisdom. That messed me up. I know somebody sitting there say, "Well, you the word said pray for wisdom." But God has not given you wisdom. He gives us Jesus. And Jesus is wisdom.
God has not given us righteousness. He gives us Jesus. And Jesus is our righteousness. Oh, oh y'all going to get this in a minute. Just to think you, you're in possession of something. The only thing you got to have is Jesus. God has not given us sanctification. It ain't a dress length or white or a cap or a doily. He gives us Jesus. And Jesus is our sanctification. So if you hang with Jesus, he, he'll clean you up. Uh, uh, not going to church. Not tipping through income. Jesus. He's the sanctifier. He gives you Jesus. Jesus is the best broom around. He's better than Clorox. And he uses some red to get out white stuff. To make stuff white again. Go figure. God has not given us redemption. He gives us Jesus Christ. And Jesus is our redemption. Jesus is God's everything. Blessings to you today. Come on, give him a praise. Give Jesus a praise. Jesus is God's everything. If you are listening to us, or you're listening in this room, and you haven't given the Lord your life, this is a good opportunity to make a decision to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you. He paid the price for you. And you, and you want to be in possession of his name. You want to be in possession of his name. When Jesus was leaving the disciples, they said, Lord, where are you going and how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. You need Jesus today. You need him up close. You need him personal. So I'm going to make a confession with you today. We're going to say a confession to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're all going to say it in the room. And those of you out there listening, you say it too. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin. And I give you my life. Today, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Today, I believe in a miracle. I believe that one day you died on a cross. And three days later, you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. And on that confession, and with that faith, I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer out there, find a good local church. We're at 4660 Military at the quarter of a ratio at, at the greater cross streets of, of Michigan Avenue and Livernois. Come see us. We'll be glad to receive you. Be glad to baptize you. Be glad to train and instruct in the ways of godliness and to help you understand who Jesus is. If you are in this, are in this room today, there's something I'm going to ask you to do. If you made that confession, you said that, that, that you accepted him today, I'm not going to embarrass you, ask you to do anything that would embarrass you. That's not who we are. But if you made that kind of decision in your heart and you felt God tugging on you, just raise a hand. Just slip up a hand. 
you invited him into your heart today when we made that confession. Even if you want to become a member of the house, and you want to restore back, I will say, and I stop walking with the Lord, and you want to be restored back. If you're in that category, or you want to be filled with the precious Holy Spirit, it's available to you. Just slip up a hand. All we're going to do is pray for you. Give you some good information about the decision you make. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.